Good morning. I'd like to welcome everyone to service today. Uh, today is the first Sunday in Advent. And so part of our tradition, and it's a tradition that goes back in churches for hundreds of years, is the use and lighting of an Advent wreath. We actually have new candles on order. They haven't got here yet. You'll have to take my word for it. There's four candles around the circle. Uh, they are getting a little short, but uh, those candles are lit once each Sunday as we count down to Christmas to remember our Lord's birth. And so uh, there's a lot of symbolism in the Advent wreath. The greenery on it represents the life that we have in Christ. Its circular form reminds us of God's eternity with no beginning and no end, but also then our uh, going into eternity, I guess. We're not eternal like God is eternal, but through faith in Jesus, we live the new life now and will continue to live that life with God uh, when he comes again to take us home in glory for all eternity. The white candle up top is the Christ candle, uh, similar to the one that we have on the altar, and that one will be lit Christmas Eve and Christmas Day, and that reminds us that Jesus is the light of the world. Today in our service, we're going to do one thing a little bit different. We're still kind of gradually going back to normal following the, the COVID shutdown and everything connected with that. So, uh, and I actually forgot to ask, Ken, would you be an usher for today? And when we, when it says offer, sorry, after the Apostles' Creed, after the Creed each Sunday, there's a sign, a slide that says offering. At that point, we're going to bring the offering up to the front of the church and place it on God's altar, as the people of old used to do, placing the offering on the altar. And in, I don't know, at some point in the future, we'll, can, we'll gather offering in a normal way. So starting next week, uh, if you want, you can put prayer requests, the little slips, into there. Uh, I will still ask for the next few weeks verbally as well, but it is nice if I get them even just 20 or 30 seconds before the prayers. That way I can sometimes group them together, or uh, if I can't quite hear you, I, it's easier to read it. So that's something we'll be doing today. And as we do that, we will be singing uh, a praise chorus. It's a new song. Uh, you'll catch on to it very easily. It's a beautiful song. And uh, at that point, we'll have Kirsten, we'll play through it once, and then we'll sing through it twice. I will announce that again, so don't worry about remembering that part. Uh, well, the reason I left the Advent wreath down is because we're going to be lighting one candle uh, each Sunday through Advent as part of our service. And so uh, in order to reach the candles, that's what we will be doing and lifting it up after that, and I'll slide back into position. Yeah, did you have a question, Christina? Yes. Was it yesterday or the day before? It was Friday. Yes. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Some people felt it. Some people did not. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Would you please stand as we begin our worship? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Today we light the first ad candle of Advent, the candle of hope. We put our hope in the one to come, the promised one who comes from God to bring good news of salvation. We hope in the one who will lead us to walk in the light of the Lord. We hope he will not let us live in dark valleys but on the high mountain of God, we light this candle of hope. On this day, we remember to hopefully look for the coming of Christ. Amen. And we continue now with our first Advent hymn, the Advent of our God. Oh, and just to mention, the word Advent means coming, just in case you'd slipped your mind.
If we say we have no sin, the truth is not in us, and we deceive ourselves. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. May the Lord, who has begun this good work in us, bring it to completion in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. For my seniors talk today, <laughs> I brought a handheld radio. Uh, walkie-talkie would not be the right word because when I was a kid, I had a walkie-talkie. Sorry, that'd be a sad present, wouldn't it? One walkie-talkie. Uh, I had a set of walkie-talkies. Uh, but if, if one of us was in our bedroom and the other one was in the front yard where the bedrooms faced, and you left the windows open, maybe you could hear. Like they, they did not work very well. It was a really cool idea, but we actually had a, two tin cans and a string that we ran two doors down to a neighbor's, to a friend's house, and that worked better. <laughs> this works better than that, however. Uh, this is actually, it's a ham radio one, so it's VHF and UHF. You have to have special permission to use it. Uh, not just anyone can use it, you have to be licensed. Uh, there's things you have to know about using it. I, you can, I can use this one either on land or my boat. And if I use it within about oh, 20 miles of town, uh, I can reach town. Uh, in fact, I can reach all down the island to Victoria. And there was one time even when I heard someone talking because of different, different ways they're doing things now in New York State. Wow. So yeah, yeah, it's really... And, I mean, I only have brought one radio with me, but just, just so you can get that little shiver down your spine of how magical it is, uh, the Canadian government broadcasts weather for, for boaters in particular, and so I've got it on that channel now. It's, I think it's Nanaimo, so it's a little scratchy, but... Oh, can you hear the voice? It's this one. I tried to find... There's another channel closer, but I couldn't find it this morning. So yeah, they just tell you what the weather is, you know, for the next day or two. So if you're out on the water, you know what to expect. Every time I use one of these, uh, there's a little bit of apprehension. It's different from a cell phone because you don't know if there's anybody at the other end. You, you, can, you can talk into it, but if there's nobody on the same frequency as you, and there's thousands of frequencies, nobody's listening. And so it's nice with a cell phone, you know if it got through, you know if it didn't, but there's a lot of places cell phones don't work and that's where, that's where these come in handy. The cell phone and this actually remind me of our prayer life because all of us, uh, we don't need special authority, we don't need a special license, but you need a special relationship and that relationship is faith in God. If you don't have faith in God, you're not gonna pray to God, are you? Because you don't, believe he's there but for those of us who are God's children we can talk to him anytime anywhere on the anywhere on the planet there's no there's no outage areas there's nothing that's out of range 
He can hear us clearly. We don't have to deal with static. And we know that he hears and answers our prayers. And that's a, that's a great comfort to all of us. And actually, I will, in our prayers today, we'll have a prayer of thanksgiving for, for an answered prayer that was shared with me yesterday. And I'll share that with you at that point. We'll continue now with our scripture readings. First reading today is from Isaiah chapter 2, verses 1 to 5. This is what Isaiah, son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. In the last days, the mountain of the Lord's temple will be established as the highest of the mountains. It will be exalted above the hills, and all nations will stream to it. Many peoples will come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the temple of the God of Jacob. He will teach us his ways, so that me so that we may walk in his paths. The law will go out from Zion, the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He will judge between the nations and will settle disputes for many peoples. They will beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation will not take up sword against nation, nor will they train for war anymore. Come, descendants of Jacob, let us walk in the light of the Lord. The epistle reading is from Romans chapter 13, verses 11 to 14. And do this, understanding the present time. The hour has already come for you to wake up from your slumber, because our salvation is nearer now than when we first believed. The night is nearly over. The day is almost here. So let us put aside the deeds of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us behave decently, as in the daytime, not in carousing and drunkenness, not in sexual immorality or debauchery, not in dissension and jealousy. Rather, clothe yourselves with the Lord Jesus Christ and do not think about how to gratify the desires of the flesh. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our gospel reading for today is from Matthew chapter 24, verses 36 to 44. We hear the words of Jesus. But about that day or hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. As it was in the days of Noah, so it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. For in the days before the flood, people were eating and drinking, marrying and giving into marriage, up to the day Noah entered the ark. They knew nothing about what would happen until the flood came and took them all away. This is how it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. Two men will be in the field. One will be taken and the other left. Two women will be grinding with a hand mill. One will be taken, the other left. Therefore, keep watch, because you do not know on what day your Lord will come. But understand this, if the owner of the house had known at what time of night the thief was coming, he would have kept watch and would not have let his house be broken into. So also you must be ready, because the Son of Man will come at an hour when you do not expect him. This is the word of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. We continue with our next hymn.
Dear friends in Christ, the Word of God I'd like to direct our attention to is our gospel reading for today. And you notice it has an, an Advent theme, but it's, it's not tied to Christmas. Rather, it's thinking about when our Lord returns again at the end of time. And I'd like to read it again and just give thought to the picture that Jesus is drawing. He's kind of doing a, a children's talk or a senior's talk. And he uses Noah and the ark as his object when he's explaining how things will be when he comes again. So he begins, No one knows about that day or hour, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. As it was in the days of Noah, so it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. For in the days before the flood, people were eating and drinking, marrying and giving into marriage, up to the day Noah entered the ark. And they knew nothing about what would happen until the flood came and took them all away. That is how it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. Two men will be in the field. One will be taken and the other left. Two women will be grinding with a hand mill. One will be taken and the other left. Therefore, keep watch, because you do not know on what day your Lord will come. But understand this. If the owner of the house had known at what time of night the thief was coming, he would have kept watch and would not have let his house be broken into. So you also must be ready, because the Son of Man will come at an hour when you do not expect him. Jesus says a couple of times, keep watch. I ran across an interesting little statistic. The security industry uh, people who su provide security for things of value, things like security guards and security systems. Uh, the data I found was actually uh, 12 years old now, so it's probably gone up significantly since then. But worldwide, in 2010, $174 billion were spent guarding things of value. $174 billion. To put that number in a bit of perspective, that same year, $66 billion worth of diamonds were sold around the world. So it's more profitable to guard diamonds and other things of value than it is to sell diamonds. Now, as we think about watching and waiting, we need to understand, I guess, first of all, the context of that. Because it is easy for us to get confused in this whole thing. 
And quite honestly, a lot of churches and a lot of Christian teachers have got things kind of turned around and backwards on this passage and their understanding. And so we're going to look at it a little more today to give, to give us a better understanding of what Jesus is talking about. Because uh, I think we'd all kind of agree, as we look at the world, the end is near. Or at least it's getting closer, isn't it? As we look at the things going on around us, it's... Yeah. So, for the first thing I have to tell you, to put this in context, for us as God's people, is this is toward the end of Jesus' ministry on earth. Which tells you that he's already been born in Bethlehem. And that's, that's sort of our anchor point and our touch point as God's children. It's not when Jesus comes again, although that certainly is important. It's when he came the first time to be our Savior, to live his life, to suffer and die for us, to call us into his family and to establish that relationship. That's where we are. That's where the disciples were. Now, the, the death and resurrection hadn't happened yet, but I mean, for us, that's, it's a package deal, right? Because we're looking back. And so, so that's our anchor. That's our touch point. When we do our watching, we do it as God's children. And we do it looking forward to our Father's return. I've, up here in Campbell River, I've led a couple of Bible studies on the book of Revelation. And that's, that's it. and actually, and I just finished leading one for the men's breakfast down in Courtney. That is an awesome book of the Bible. But a lot of Christians, not just, not just Lutherans, a lot of Christians are, are scared of it. Because it talks about, there's all kinds of pictures. There's, there's horsemen, and there's dragons, and there's beasts, and there's, you know, smoke, and thunder, and all these different things. And so for some Christians, when they look ahead and think of when, when God's coming again, it's a, it's a terrifying thing. It's a, it's a thing you don't want to have. You want to, go, you, want to go to, you want to go to heaven before that happens, right? You want to die before Jesus comes again. Because the, uh, the, other, the other option just sounds terrifying. What's really sad is the reason the book of Revelation is so... Makes, can make Christians so terrified and, and so afraid is because it's so misunderstood. Uh, there, are, there are Christian churches, there are Christian teachers. They look at the book of Revelation as if it's a road map uh, or maybe if you set alerts on your phone, it's, those are the, the, this is the, the two-hour warning, the one-hour warning, the 15-minute warning, now is the time you should be there. That's how they look at the book of Revelation. And that's not the point of the book at all. The book of Revelation talks about, just to condense it down really simple, after finally leading a third Bible study in Courtney, I figured out the, the distillation of the book of Revelation. And here it is. I'll start up here at the top. Things look bad. They're, they are bad. They're really bad. But God is in control, and he's watching over his people, and he will take us home, and in the end, he's the winner. And then, using different pictures and different symbols and different imagery, things are bad, things look bad, things really are bad, but God is in control, and he will come and gather his people, and we will live with him forever. He wins in the end. And so, if you want to just take a read through Revelation, don't, you don't even have to worry about what all the images are. Look for that pattern, because it happens over and over again. It's like, you know, the, the climax is building and the, the things against God's people are building. By the way, when John received that revelation and wrote down that revelation for the Christians, that, is, that was exactly what was going on. And Christians were being persecuted and put to death. And so it, it's not about allowing people to figure out, what, you know, what day you want to make sure you're in church. So when Jesus comes back, you're like as ready as you can be. That's not the point. The point is, no matter how bad things are in life, God is in control, he's with his people, and he will take us to be with him. That's the whole point of the book of Revelation. And so, when we're looking forward, when we're looking ahead, when we're watching for our Lord's return, we don't have to watch in fear. We're already dead to sin with Christ, 
and risen again in his resurrection. When he comes again, it's going to be to gather us together to take us to be with him forever in heaven, whether we've died or not already. That it, it doesn't really matter. He's going to gather all his people together. And it's something we can look forward to. In fact, the last words in the book of Revelation are, Amen, come, Lord Jesus. It's, please, you know, like the sooner the better. Because things look bad. <laughs> they are bad. They're really bad. In our day, still. Now, one of the things that is often misunderstood is that that passage, the verses, two men will be in the field, one will be taken and the other left. And maybe some of you, especially if you have, say, Baptist friends uh, or Pentecostal friends, they, they'll talk about the rapture. And I'm sure you've at least heard the word. If not, you've probably heard of the book Left Behind. Uh, it was a, a series of books that are based on, basically they're based on this one little verse of scripture and a, actually a misunderstanding of that one little verse of scripture what was it dan brown i think was the author right yeah. he got it completely wrong and then he tells this this story about it and basically what the teaching is is that and actually here it gets really confusing because there's a bunch of different but basically god's going to take suck up all his people off the earth before things get really bad okay and so you don't want to be left behind. And that's what the book talks about, the people who are left behind. And maybe you've seen bumper stickers that say, because it used to be around a bunch of years ago, in case of rapture, this vehicle will be like without a driver or something like that. And so like the idea that you know, these people are going to be taken up into heaven before things get bad, and they'll, they'll just miss all that kind of stuff. That's not what this verse is saying. And by the way, when, when that's what your church teaches, this is what it leads to. And this I didn't find out until just a few weeks ago. There's actually something called rapture anxiety syndrome. And what it is, is the fear that you will be left behind. And there was a, a psychologist who's talking about it. And she grew up in one of these churches. And she actually shared, the reason she studied this and... and you know, kind of identified it was because when they were kids and they'd be playing, everybody except one person would go run and hide and then wouldn't answer when the other person was calling, right? Like, hey, where'd you guys go? And all of a sudden the house is empty and you're all alone and all your Christian friends have been raptured and you're left behind because you're not God's child. And still adults, uh, adults are saying, you know, that when they're home alone, and it's just, it's too quiet. It's like, did it happen? And I got left behind? It's a, it's a real thing. Where's the little two kids breaking in all the I mean, that was scary, but the other one really scared those people. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that, they'd be left behind that they're not, they're not worthy. Their, their faith isn't strong enough or, you know, whatever. But they, they would actually, some of these kids would be terrified because nobody would answer them and they thought they were left behind so let's take a look at that because some of you may have run across that from friends or, or maybe from readings you've done other places and this takes us back to the seniors talk that jesus gave uh let's see as it was in the days of noah okay so back then so it will be at the coming of the son of man for in the days before the flood people were eating drinking marrying and giving into marriage up to the day Noah entered the ark, and they knew nothing about what would happen until the flood came and took them all away. That is how it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. Two men will be in the field, one will be taken and the other left. Two women will be grinding with a hand mill, one will be taken, the other left. So who's taken? Who's taken away at the time of Noah? Yeah, Noah and his family, they weren't taken away by the flood. They, they were brought through the flood in the ark. And so what Jesus is saying is just like the unbelievers were taken away, so it will be when Jesus comes again. One, right, the, the unbeliever will be taken away. They'll be cast out of 
They'll be cast out of God's presence. It's, it's kind of like, you know, the sheriff is coming to your farm. And you and your neighbor are working. Your neighbor's got a warrant for his arrest. You don't. When the police show up, you're not worried. You've done nothing wrong. Your neighbor, however, will be taken away. And so, like I said, the, the taking away that book of, series of books and that teaching, it's got it backwards. It's not God's people that are taken away. We stay in God's presence like we are now as his children through that relationship of faith. It's the unbelievers who are taken away. Now, and I'm going to close with this. How do we watch? Because you don't just go stand outside your house when you get home this afternoon and you know, it says, as the lightning is visible in the, or, as the lightning in the east is visible in the west, so you don't look east, right, until you go to bed. I probably shouldn't go to bed. Keep, look, keep watching. Uh, that's, that's not what Jesus is saying. In fact, notice how he talks about it. He says, two men are in the field. Two women are grinding wheat. Go about your life. We all have a calling from God to to do a certain job, to fill certain roles in our family or in our community or in our church. These are the, the callings that we have. And what Jesus is saying is, be about your daily life. Do the things that God has called you to do, but watch and look forward to, anticipate. You know, when, is, when is God coming in? I don't know. I don't know, but I'm going to focus on his word. I'm going to focus on God and what he's done for me. I'm going to watch that I, I strive to grow in my faith instead of just, just sitting at this place. But I'm going to live my life. And I can live my life because I don't have that hanging over me. It, we've been judged. We've been found not guilty. When Jesus comes again, it's to take us home. And so we can watch, we can look forward with anticipation, and we can say, like John said at the end of his vision, Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. In his name, Amen. Now would you please stand? We join together confessing our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Ken, if you could please bring the offering forward. And as I mentioned, we'll listen to Kirsten play through it once. Then we'll follow along to the slides and sing through it twice before we continue in prayer.
I have a number of prayer requests that I'm aware of for today. Uh, first one is prayers for Ukraine, in particular for the, the critical infrastructure that's being destroyed, uh, that they would be able to rebuild in time, that people will have things like heat, power, and water. Uh, for the victims of the verbal assault on Twitter, for Quinlan and her multiple ongoing health issues, I mentioned uh, how God hears our prayers and answers them. Dieter shared at men's breakfast yesterday that a couple of weeks ago we prayed for Myrna, that she'd be able to get an appointment soon uh, with the orthopedic surgeon. Uh, and the next morning, or sorry, the next day, I don't know if it was morning, but the next day they got a call from the doctor's office arranging an appointment. So we rejoice. She's been waiting a long time for that, and we'll pray that things continue to move forward quickly. Uh, for... Todd, Kirsten, and Alex, and the congregations that he served in the difficult times they face ahead. For the members at Faith in Courtney, this afternoon they'll be having a congregational meeting to discuss just what it is they're looking for in a pastor and what they see as their, their pastoral needs going ahead. And there's, there's not consensus at this point, and that's, why, that's one of the reasons they haven't extended another call yet. And so we pray that God will give them the wisdom they need to make a decision that will be a blessing to them. Uh, for Sonia's dad, uh, following surgery to repair a brain aneurysm, it seems like something else has happened, and he's in hospital now. Uh, his name's Bob. We want to pray for him and for all the family today. Are there any other prayer requests? Don. Uh, this from my mom. Uh, she had an ultrasound on, on Thursday. Kathy? A little prayer of thanksgiving for Quinlan. She managed to stay in school for a whole week, wow. which is the first time since, the, since, she, since February that she's been able to do okay. that. Okay. And she did fall asleep in, in class in the afternoon. But she I used to do that too, so. <laughs> Okay, thank you. Thank you. That is that is encouraging. Guy. Yes, another prayer for my mother Doris Wallace for peace and thanksgiving and for joy for her and her stay in, in the home that she's at. Okay. Penny. Okay, thank you. Sarah, I saw your hand. Yes, I'd like a prayer of thanksgiving for our members who came forward to uh, decorate our church so beautifully for the Advent and the Christmas season. Everything just looks joyful. Okay, yes, it does. I agree. Uh, Papa? Sorry, Lawrence? <laughs> Okay, okay, thank you. Debbie, I saw your hand up as well. Thank you for your patience. Uh, prayer of thanksgiving for my friend Anna, who fell and broke her hip earlier this week. Every surgery worked very well, and she's home now. Wow, okay. Uh, and a prayer for Drew, who is still uh, recovering from her stroke. Okay. Kathy. Oh, okay, gotcha. She is here today, but... Oh, okay. Okay. Okay, let's bow our heads as we continue in prayer. Gracious and living God, we thank you that we can come to you in prayer, that we can make our petitions known to you, leave them before your throne, knowing that you hear them, and then we can also come to you with thanksgiving, for the many gifts and blessings that you give to us. Lord, today we pray for the people in Ukraine, and in particular for 
uh, those important pieces of infrastructure that the Russians are intent on destroying. Lord, we pray as winter comes on that the people in Ukraine would have the power and heat they need, the water that they need to sustain themselves. We pray, Lord, that you would frustrate the plans of the Russians and that you would bless and strengthen those who are serving the people of Ukraine in trying to do the repairs that are so desperately needed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord, we pray for... Uh, for all of the victor, victims of abusive language and, and verbal assaults that take place on Twitter and online, our world seems to be becoming uh, a more and more angry place. And people are, from behind a screen, willing to say things that they would never say to someone in person, things that should not be said at all. We ask, Lord, that you'd be with these people, that you'd bring healing to them, that you'd comfort them with your presence, and Lord, we pray that you would turn hearts away from this, this type of anger and hatred, that you would bring peace to all corners of our world. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. We give thanks, Lord, that Quinlan had a, a pretty good week this week for the improvement that she's seeing. And we ask that you continue to be with her and bring her healing from long COVID and, and all the different health issues that have come about as a result of that. Lord, we pray that you would be with her, that you'd be with her family, be with the doctors, and that you continue to bless and strengthen her. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We also give thanks on behalf of Dieter and Myrna that you heard our prayer and that she now has an appointment coming up with the surgeon. Lord, we pray that things would continue to move ahead quickly, that she'd be able to have the surgery soon, have a good and full recovery, enjoy a life free from the pain she's been experiencing for so long. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for Todd and Kirsten, Alex, for the congregations that he served in Saskatchewan. There's going to be difficult days ahead, and we pray, Lord, that you would be with them, that you would comfort them, even in the midst of their sorrow. We pray, Lord, that you would bring them through this time you, we know you are a God who is so great, you say you can even bring blessing out of bad. And Lord, we give this, this situation and these people into your hands, and we pray for that blessing as well. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We ask that you'd be with our brothers and sisters down at Faith and Courtney as they have a meeting later today, as they struggle with your will for their ministry there in that place, in the in this day and in the years ahead, we ask that you would guide the discussions, the deliberations, that the decisions that are made would be pleasing to you and would be a blessing, not only to the people at Faith, but also to the people in Courtney and the surrounding region. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We thank you, Lord, for the surgery that Sonia's dad was able to have, and we ask that you'd continue to be with him now as it seems like something is, is perhaps going on in connection with that, perhaps, or, or something different. We pray, Lord, that you would give peace to Bob as he's in hospital, that you would be with the, the doctors and nurses as they care for him, that you'd be with his family as they are there with him and, and as, they are <clears throat> excuse me, as they are worried and concerned and, and caring for him. We pray, Lord, that you would give all of them the comfort of your presence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we ask that you'd be with Flo as she awaits her test results. We pray, Lord, that the results would be good or, or at least would be definitive and something that the, the doctors can, can work with and care for her. Lord, we pray that you would give her and Dawn and all of the family peace in this time of waiting. And we pray, Lord, that you would bring good news in the end. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We ask that you be with Doris as she continues to be in care down in Comox. We thank you for the care that she's receiving, and we ask that you would give her the comfort of your presence. Give her peace day to day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We ask that you'd be with Ruth and Mac as they deal with cancer that you would bless them with health and strength, 
that you'd bless the care that they're receiving and that you would be with their families. Give them your comfort and encouragement. Draw them all closer to you that they may feel that strength that they don't have, but you can give. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we thank you for all of the members of our church and the many different ways that they serve us and you here in our congregation. And today we give special thanks for those who have taken the time and effort to, to set up the, the decorations for Advent and for Christmas, for the joy that they bring, for the reminders that they are of, of who you are and what you've done for us and what we have to look forward to. We pray, Lord, that you continue to bless and strengthen all those who serve in these ways. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We ask that you'd be with Joyce and Brenda this week as they will be going for surgery. We pray, Lord, in the, the days of waiting, you'd give them comfort, that the procedures would go well and would be effective, that their recoveries would be quick and complete. We also pray for peace and comfort for the families during these difficult times of waiting. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord, we thank you that Debbie's friend Anna has had her hip surgery and that it went very well, that she's able to be home now. Continue to bless her with a full and complete recovery. Protect her from complications. Be with her family as they care for her. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We also ask that you'd be with Drew as he continues to recover, that you would touch him with your healing hand, that you would restore him, that you'd bless the care that he is receiving, and that you would be with those who are caring for him, that they would be a blessing to him. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Finally, Lord, we pray for Cora, who is still missing. We pray for her family, and Lord, we ask that you would be at work in this situation. We pray, Lord, that she would be safely found. But if not, Lord, we pray for a special measure of your presence with her family and friends. We, we leave her and all of them in your hands, trusting in your goodness and love. We ask all of these things in the name of Jesus, who's taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Please be seated as we join in our closing hymn.